the principles of rocketry were first tested over 2,000 years ago, but we have only built rockets to explore space in the last 70 years or so. Rockets now routinely launch spacecraft into orbit, delivering satellites to low Earth orbit or cargo to the International Space Station. With the commercial space industry booming, astronauts are now traveling to and from the orbiting lab on a regular basis, carrying scientific experiments with them. Reusable rockets have even become common, landing back on Earth autonomously and ready to be used again. Before we begin, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and press the bell icon. Archytas, 428-347 BC Archytas, a Greek philosopher, mathematician, an astronomer, was said to have built and flown a small bird-shaped device propelled by a jet of compressed air or steam. The bird could have been suspended by a wire or attached to the end of a bar that rotated around a pivot. This was the first device to be reported to use rocket propulsion. Hero engine, C, A, D. 10 to 70. Though not a rocket, the basic principle of rocket and jet propulsion was used in Hero of Alexandria's steam engine. Hero's engine had an unknown appearance, but it was made up of a copper vessel heated by a fire beneath. The water in the vessel turned into steam, which traveled up two tubes to a hollow sphere that could rotate freely. Two L-shaped tubes extending from the sphere allowed the steam to escape in gas jets. The sphere spun in the opposite direction of the jets. For a thousand years, the Hero engine was regarded as a fun toy, and its true potential was not realized. The world's first artificial satellite. Following World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union competed for space. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union won the first round by launching its Sputnik I satellite. The satellite was spherical in shape and had four antennas. It was 83.6 kilograms in weight. Two months later, the 508.3 kilogram, 1,118.26 pound Sputnik 2 orbited the Earth with a living passenger aboard. Laika, a small dog, spent a few hours orbiting Earth. Although she died in space, she paved the way for all subsequent humans. Explorer 1 With the successful launch of Explorer 1 on January 31, 1958, the United States entered the satellite launching business. The Juno 1, a modified Jupiter C booster, was used to launch the satellite. Explorer 1's Geiger counter made the first significant discovery about the space environment. Despite being much smaller than the Sputniks, weighing only 13.93 kilograms, 30.66 pounds. Explorer 1 discovered what would later be known as the Van Allen radiation belts around Earth. X-15 America's X-15 experimental aircraft flew to the edge of space between 1959 and 1968. The air-launched rocket plane broke numerous flight records in 199 flights, including speed, 7,274 km per hour or 4,520 miles per hour and altitude records. Important parameters for attitude control in space and re-entry angles were established during test flights. One of 12 X-15 pilots was Neil Armstrong, the first American to set foot on the moon. Yuri Gagarin goes into orbit. With the launch of cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin on April 12, 1961, space became the domain of humans. His spaceflight lasted 1 hour and 48 minutes. Gagarin orbited Earth once during that time in his Vostok 1 space capsule, reaching a maximum altitude of 315 kilometers, 196 miles. Gagarin ejected from the capsule at an altitude of 6,100 meters, 20,000 feet and parachuted safely to the ground upon reentry. Freedom 7 Alan Shepard, Jr., an American astronaut, took off from Cape Canaveral, Florida, on May 5, 1961, inside his Freedom 7 Mercury space capsule, which was atop a Redstone rocket. The rocket did not have enough power to launch the craft into orbit, so Shepard flew suborbitally for 187 kilometers, 116 miles before returning to Earth in an ocean splashdown 15 minutes and 22 seconds later. Moon Rocket President John F. Kennedy addressed a joint session of Congress just days after Alan Shepard's flight, and challenged America to send an American to the moon and return him safely before the end of the decade. Despite the shockingly bold announcement, some of the steps to accomplishing this mission were already in motion. 
NASA had begun work on rocket components capable of a round-trip lunar flight. The rocket was dubbed the Saturn V the following year. It would tower over all previous rockets at 110.6 meters, 363 feet. The Saturn V would have three stages, a capsule with a small propulsion unit for the return trip, a two-stage lunar lander, and a three-stage spacecraft. Glenn orbits Earth. On February 20, 1962, astronaut John H. Glenn, Jr. became the first American to enter orbit, riding on a more powerful missile, the Atlas. Glenn's flight was equal to the Soviet program. Glenn spent four hours and 55 minutes in space orbiting Earth three times. An early return was caused by a sensor switch. The sensor indicated that the mercury capsule's heat shield was loose, but it was later determined that the shield was securely in place during flight. The sensor was broken. On May 15, 1963, the final of six Mercury flights took place, with astronaut Gordon Cooper remaining in space for nearly a day and a half. Preparing for the Moon The Mercury missions were followed by Project Gemini. Two astronauts were aboard the Gemini space capsule, which was atop a Titan missile. Gemini astronauts pioneered spacewalking, spacecraft rendezvous, and docking procedures during missions lasting up to 14 days. Important spacecraft systems required for upcoming moon missions were evaluated. During 1965 and 1966, 10 Gemini missions were flown. In the 1970s, the Titan rocket, originally designed as an intercontinental ballistic missile, carried the Viking spacecraft to Mars and the Voyager spacecraft to the outer solar system. Deep Space The Titan rockets, 1959-2005, which were used to launch the Gemini missions, were widely used to launch unmanned payloads. Titans that had been upgraded lifted heavy satellites into Earth orbit and propelled important spacecraft to other planets. Among its accomplishments are the Viking missions to Mars and the Voyager missions to the outer planets and interstellar space. Sounding Rockets Although rockets have become larger and more powerful in general, there are numerous reasons for flying smaller rockets. Since 1961, the Canadian-designed Black Brant sounding rocket has successfully completed over 800 flights carrying small payloads such as cameras, instruments, and microgravity experiments. Because of its dependability and low cost, the Black Brant has become a favorite among researchers. The largest multi-stage Black Brants can reach altitudes of up to 900 kilometers and have payload capacities of about 100 kilograms, 220 pounds, 560 miles. Delta Family The American Delta rocket, which dates back to the early 1960s, is one of the most versatile commercial and military payload launch rockets. Delta is available in a variety of configurations, including multiple stages and heavy lift strap-on boosters that increase payload capacity to high orbits. Delta has conducted over 325 launches, with a success rate of more than 95%. Atlas The Atlas rocket, like the Delta rocket, has deep roots. The Atlas was designed as a missile in the 1950s and is now in its fifth major configuration. It was modified to transport John Glenn and three other Mercury astronauts into space, and it has since been used for numerous commercial, scientific, and military satellite launches and interplanetary missions. The Atlas V rocket is the most recent in the series. Pegasus The Pegasus launch vehicle, like the mythological creature, is winged. It is lifted to approximately 12,000 meters and then air launched from beneath the wing of a carrier aircraft. This arrangement reduces the cost of launch for small orbital payloads. 30 years The Space Shuttle was a novel concept for transporting people and cargo into low Earth orbit. It was made up of a central external tank, two solid rocket boosters, and a winged orbiter. Only the orbiter, a spacecraft a plane a space truck, made it into orbit. It, like the solid rocket boosters, was intended to be reusable. Each mission required a new external tank. Science laboratories, space probes, telescopes, and Earth sensing systems were housed in a vast payload bay. Many shuttle payloads contained International Space Station components. The orbiter re-entered Earth's atmosphere and glided to an unpowered landing on a runway at the end of a shuttle mission. The first space shuttle flight occurred in 1981, and the final of its 135 missions ended in 2011. 
space rocket now a day. Rocket launches were once the exclusive domain of national governments, but with the rise of private spaceflight companies, more rockets are being launched into space than ever before. While most rockets launch satellites into orbit, some, such as Russia's Soyuz, transport astronauts into space. Americans will be launched into orbit by SpaceX's Dragon and Boeing CST-100 Starliner, while Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin will launch space tourists on short suborbital trips. After launch, SpaceX and Blue Origin even land their rockets for later reuse. This was the evolution of the space rockets. We hope you like the video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more videos about the evolution of things. Thank you for watching.